In this video, I'll show you how to test Zener diodes with a multimeter. Testing Zener diodes is easy, and you don't even need the diode check function on your multimeter to do so. How do Zener diodes work? For most non-Zener diodes, current is intended to flow in the forward bias direction like this, and the reverse breakdown voltage is ignored. However, Zener diodes are intentionally utilized for the reverse breakdown voltage drop like this. By design, every Zener has its own specified reverse breakdown voltage. So contrary to standard diodes, testing zeners require you to put your red lead on the banded or cathode side and the black lead on the other side of the diode. You need to have enough voltage to reach the breakdown voltages, so several 9 volt batteries in series with a current limiting resistor will do the trick. Here's a schematic. For R1, any value between 4.7K to 10K ohms will do, and these are very common values. The 28 volts we have here is the three 9 volt batteries connected end to end, which will allow you to test Zener diodes for up to 25 volts. You can always add another battery, but you need to be more aware of the dangers of the higher voltages. Notice I am wearing gloves, and I recommend you do so when you are working with voltages any greater than 20 volts. Notice we're not going to use the diode check function because it doesn't work with Zener diodes. Instead, we're going to use the DC voltage function because what we're doing is we're measuring the voltage across the diode. We'll construct our tester like this. All we need is the three batteries, the resistor, and the three clip leads. And we have the clip leads connected to the meter so that it's reading the full voltage prior to hooking it across the diode. Once we connect it to the diode, the diode will drop the voltage down to its reverse breakdown voltage. So I've got some random Zener diodes here, and I'm gonna call them mystery diodes because I don't know what their value is, but using this test jig here, we'll be able to find out what the values of these Zener diodes are. So let's test this one right here. This one is giving us approximately 18 volts, so we'll call that an 18 volt Zener diode. Let's test this one. This is giving us approximately 24 volts, so that's a 24 volt Zener. Let's test this one. This is obviously a 5 volt Zener diode. Now let's test this one. This is obviously a 12 volt Zener. Notice on these Zener diodes, if I reverse the leads, I will be checking their forward voltage drop. It's going to act like a normal diode. Let's try to do this. And that's giving me a reading that a normal diode would give us. But normally, again, Zener diodes are not used in their forward bias condition. They are designed to be used in the reverse bias condition. If you happen to test the Zener diode and you get no voltage drop whatsoever, that means that the diode is likely open, which by the way is a common failure mode for Zener diodes, contrary to most diodes. Zener diodes often do fail in the open condition. Using this test jig, you can also test regular diodes if you didn't have a diode check function. But to test a regular diode, you're gonna to need to hook the black lead to the cathode or the bandage side. This gives us a forward bias condition of 0.66 volts, which is about right for a standard diode. And if we reverse it, reverse the leads, it doesn't drop at all, which is what we would expect for a standard diode because we want to have a very, very high reverse breakdown voltage for a standard diode. For a complete guide on testing semiconductors, click the link in the video description or just Google semiconductor testing cheat sheet. Also, to purchase the meter using this demonstration, there is a link in the description of this video. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel.